Sestiana na casa, braca siti kisti anda casa. E broko sori ata na casia. Sesta na casi braca sa. Yori ner kisi anda kasto broko sori. Vasi abra. Heliara na casa broko sori. Sesta na casi braca sa. Sonia Sanda Kashta Prakasa. Feel that refreshing? <laughs> we sing in the spirit. <laughs> Praise God. You were here this morning. You got a you got a yes, I'll do that, Lord. You got a lesson on praying in tongues and interpreting back to your mind. There's someone here tonight, you've lost partial hearing or all of your hearing in your right ear. Don't know where you are. God's uh, healing you right now. You're going to all of a sudden, you're going to have hearing coming back in that right ear. You and you in Jesus' name. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Someone who has uh, burning, you're burning right here, like when you eat and it bothers bothering you right now. Where are you? Where's that person? You're burning right here. Ma'am, you put your hand up on everything I've said. <laughs> That's going now in Jesus' name, you and you. Hallelujah, going, 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 going. You know, the auctioneer says, going, going, gone. I like that. <laughs> Sickness and disease, going, going, gone. <laughs> Holy Ghost auction. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Wow. Woo, that's good. <laughs> that's good. Woo, woo. Woo, -hoo. woo. -hoo. Hallelujah. Wow, that's good. Praise God. Well, be seated if you can. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm having such a wonderful time here in Cedar Rapids. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for allowing me to come and to pour into you some of what God has poured into me. Praise God. I've had lots of comments from people since I've been here uh, thanking me for telling stories about my father, Earl Roberts. Um, I, I know thousands of them because <laughs> I was there. <laughs> and uh, I thank God for that. Um, the Bible says, give honor to whom honor is due. And I think I have heard every Oral Roberts joke that has ever been told. He was playing golf with Bob Hope in a charity event, and Bob Hope got on the microphone and said, I don't like to play golf with Oral Roberts because when I putt, the hole heals up. <laughs> it's said that Oral Roberts and Billy Graham died and went to heaven. And when they got to the gate, St. Peter met them and said, we're a little full right now. 
so I'm going to have to send you down below for a while. <laughs> and after a while, after a while, Satan called Peter and said, you've got to get these two out of here. <laughs> because Billy is getting everybody saved, and Oral is raising money to air condition the place. <laughs> I've heard them all. <laughs> they said that my dad died and went to heaven, and he got to the gate, and St. Peter said, Are you Oral Roberts? Yes. The Oral Roberts? Yes. Well, come with me. The, Jesus wants to see you. And he stood before Jesus, and Jesus said to him, Are you Oral Roberts? Yes. <laughs> the Oral Roberts? <laughs> yes. Well, come with me. My father wants to see you. And he stood before God, and God said, Are you Oral Roberts? Yes. The Oral Roberts? Yes. Oral, I got this pain in my shoulder. <laughs> I've heard them all. Oh, my. My, my, my. The stories they've told on him. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was on television one night, and the Lord uh, was moving um, in my heart, and I heard these words come out of my mouth. I want to spend my life mending broken people. Now, I'm an evangelist in the healing ministry, and those words came out of my mouth, and my longtime friend, Mike Murdoch, who is, in my opinion, the greatest uh, charismatic uh, songwriter, gospel songwriter in America, just with him a few days ago, uh, heard me say it. And he wrote a song and sent it to me. And I thought I would let you hear it tonight. see a life that's broken give me words that should be spoken for I I will remember the pain when I see
That's why I've come. I want to spend my life mending broken people. I want to spend my life removing pain. Lord, let my words let them heal a heart that hurts. I want to spend my whole life mending broken people. I want to spend my life mending broken people. the years a lot of songs written like that and were sent to me and I would premiere them on national television uh, my dad would make a call and say I want you to write a song I want Richard to sing it on the television program he called Ralph Carmichael one day and said I want I want you to write a song called something good is going to happen to, to me and um, it happened to you excuse me and um, uh, Ralph wrote that song and I, I premiered it and I'd get a call from Bill and Gloria Gaither and they would write a song that I would premiere on television, uh, The Church Triumphant or It Is Finished or one of the great songs that they wrote. And uh, I've had the wonderful opportunity to premiere a lot of songs on television over the years. I thank God for that. And thank God for every gospel writer. Uh, if you have your Bibles tonight, open to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. This morning we talked particularly about praying in tongues and interpreting back as the Apostle Paul had said. Before he said in 1 Corinthians 14, what will I do? I will pray with the Spirit and I will pray with the understanding also. And we understand that when we speak in tongues we are speaking to God, not to men. There one, thereby the scripture says no one understands it. We're speaking the mysteries of God. We feel better. We are edified, the scripture tells us. But we don't know what we're saying. So Paul said, excuse me, Paul said, what will we do? Or what will I do? I will pray in tongues and then I will stop and pray in my own language also. And when you pray in your own language, you begin to get new ideas and insights and concepts and new and innovative ways of doing things and knowing things that you could not know without the Holy Spirit. And that's the benefit that we Christians have of praying in tongues. The world cannot do it. But every born again believer has the right to pray in tongues. You may or may not pray in tongues, but it's not because you cannot. If you are born again, you have the Holy Spirit. You don't have to go get him, because when you got saved, he came in. More witness with your spirit, Romans tells us, that you are a child of God. So... For a Christian to say, I don't have the Holy Spirit or I have to go get the Holy Spirit, that's wrong. We have the Holy Spirit. Now, we may, not, we, may, we may choose not to allow Him to speak through us. That's a decision that we make. But thank God we have that opportunity to pray in tongues. And when we pray in tongues, the devil doesn't have any idea what we're saying. It's also, you're, you know, you, you're praying in the perfect will of God. But then when you pray back in your own language, you begin to get understanding. And you begin to say in English what you've been wanting to tell God and you have not known how. Amen. Or you get his response back to you so that you know what to do. Amen. Now, we're going to switch gears and go a little different way with the Holy Spirit tonight. By the way, someone, in fact, there are three or four of you that have pain in your right shoulder and you're not able to move it without it clicking and popping and, 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 and hurting. Whoever you are, if you just stand up right now. There are three or four of you. If you're, you're going to find the pain is leaving right now. Whoever you are, just stand up. There's one, there's two, there's three, I think there's three or four. 
Yeah, there's several more. Just, just lift your hand right now. And, and someone just touch them right now. In the name of Jesus. That, there it goes. Pain, come out. Now just start moving that shoulder. You're going to find, you're going to find freedom now. You're going to find freedom in it now. Freedom. Freedom in it now. Freedom. 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 Praise God. Now, isn't it interesting that God would manifest what I'm getting ready to preach on? That was an operation of the word of knowledge. Uh, 1 Corinthians 12, and let's begin reading in verse 1. Now, concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away under these dumb idols, even as you were led. So they have come out of worshiping idols. They knew nothing about God, and uh, there were a lot of things that were going on in the church at Corinth, and Paul was writing really a correction letter to help them understand and to focus back on the things of God and not get out of kelter and out of bounds. And that's that's easy for people to do, to get so excited about the manifestations that they, that they leave out the grounding. And Paul is giving us a grounding letter here, and he's explaining things to us. And it's just as important today in our society as it was then. Now he's going to begin describing the nine gifts of the Spirit, beginning at verse 4. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit and there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is, the, it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge, that's what just happened a moment ago, by the same Spirit to another faith, or the gift of faith, by the same Spirit. To another the gifts of healing, by the same Spirit. To another, notice gifts, plural, gifts of healing. To another the working of miracles. To another prophecy, the gift of prophecy. To another discerning of spirits. To another diverse or different kinds of tongues. To another the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the selfsame Spirit, dividing to every man severally as he wills. There are nine gifts of the Holy Spirit that the Apostle Paul outlines here in this chapter. And he tells us that they are sovereign. These gifts do not belong to men. They belong to God. And they are only manifested by the Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit chooses. And through whomever the Holy Spirit chooses. You cannot decide to operate in a gift of the Spirit. However, you can pray in tongues whenever you want. Now this has been misunderstood in some quarters. People have said things like, when did you get the gift of tongues? Well, you never got the gift of tongues, nor will you ever get the gift of tongues, because the Holy Spirit cannot be gotten by men. The Holy Spirit, or the, the uh, excuse me, the gifts of the Spirit, the, the gift of tongues, the gift of interpretation of tongues, the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, whatever, the nine gifts, are property of the Holy Spirit. And He manifests those gifts whenever He decides. And He decides to do it through whomever He chooses. So we have nothing to do with that in that sense, except to open ourselves up and seek Him. My father taught me, never seek the gifts. Seek the giver of the gifts. Because in Him is resident all of the gifts. And you know, you can say, well, God, I want you to work this, uh, I want you to work this through me. Well, tell me how that goes when it happens to you, okay? I've told God what to do, when to do, when to do it, how to do it, who to do it to. He's never done it my way once, you know. He does it His way. So the gifts of the Spirit are very important in the lives of Christians. And they are operating in Christians when Christians, many Christians, are not aware 
that those gifts are operating. And what does a typical Christian do when that happens? Oftentimes they say, well, I wonder what that was. That was strange. That was unusual. That was out of the ordinary. And they pass it off. And they discount it. And they do not allow God to do through them what he wants to do. The gifts of the Spirit from time to time operate in all of us. However, there generally, in my experience, there, there is one or possibly there are one or possibly two more of the gifts that will operate in a Christian more than others. But we have the capacity, if the Lord chooses, for all of the gifts to operate through us. He may or may not choose to operate a certain gift through us, but that's up to him. That's not up to us. As I said, we never seek the gifts. We seek the giver of the gifts. In my case, it is more than likely the word of knowledge. That's how God uses me. And sometimes it could be a word of wisdom that God manifests through me. Sometimes it might be a gift of faith. Sometimes it's a gift of prophecy. Once in a great while, it is a gift of tongues and a gift of interpretation of tongues, but not very often. For some reason, God seems to center on the word of knowledge and the gifts of healing with me more than anyone else. But that's not because I chose that. That's because he chose that. And I cannot, I cannot order when he does it. I will say to him, now, Lord, I want you to do that at the beginning of the service. <laughs> Invariably, he'll wait till the end. Or I'll say, I want you to wait until the end. Invariably, he'll do it at the beginning. Okay? So I, I am not in control of that. What I am in control of obeying when he says it. Yes. Now, I, I, I was leaning over uh, talking to him a minute ago, a few minutes ago, about the sound, uh, the, 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 the music track we, they're going to play when I go to sing. And I, I said, just have them prepared, and I'll point at them and start it. And I, I, put my hand, I put my hand on him, on his shoulder, and the minute I touched him, wham, just like that, I got a word of knowledge. Well, I don't know anything about his back. I had no idea he was a weightlifter. I don't, I don't know any of that. I don't know any of that. But I knew he was having back pain. How did I know it? I knew it because I had a word of knowledge. And I said, you've been having back problems, haven't you? He said, yes. I said, well, the Lord's healing your back right now. Amen. I didn't make that happen. You know. It just happened. But what I have to learn how to do is be obedient when it does happen. But now, let's, let's look at these for a moment. Let's, let's look at these. There, there are diversities. There are differences. But it's the same God who manifests them all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. Now, I'm going to go through these. I may, I may take time to do all of them. I may just do a few of to see how the Lord leads. But when I do, many of you are going to say, Oh, oh, I, I remember a time when that happened. Yeah, yeah I, I understand now. I didn't understand then. Right. Virtually every one of you have had a time when the word of wisdom operated in your life. Yeah. Where suddenly, in the midst of a situation, when you didn't know what to do, <coughs> Suddenly, you might say, out of the blue, yeah. you knew. And God gave you a word of wisdom to guide someone or to guide yourself. And you might have said, wow, where did that come from? And that's what many of us do. And we don't say, God, is that you? What are you trying to say? Solomon had that happen when the when the mother came uh, uh, for the you know for, for the children for the for the child and Solomon gave a word of wisdom let's let's for the two women I should say let's let's cut the baby in half yeah. oh no the, the the true mother said no 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 that was a word of wisdom that happens all throughout the Bible you find it and there are times in our lives when God will give us a certain word of wisdom and if we're not careful. It's easy to pass it off and say, well, that was weird. I wonder what that was. And you know, the last thing that a Christian wants to be is weird. If you don't believe me, just look at your neighbor. Look at him. We don't want to be construed as being weird or strange. They already think we're nuts anyway. You know? But virtually everyone here can remember a time when suddenly out of seemingly nowhere, uh -huh. 
you had some wisdom that you knew you didn't have before. That is an operation of the word of wisdom. Now, what you do with that wisdom is important. What I usually do when that happens to me is I say, Lord, what are you trying to say to me? And what do you want me to do with it? Is it for me? Is it for someone I'm with? What am I to do with it? What we have to learn how to do is to be pliable and to be willing to take a risk. You say, well, Richard, what if I'm wrong? Well, have you ever made another mistake in your life? Has anyone here ever made a mistake? Put up your right hand. Do you? Well, a few of you have made a mistake. You ever made more than one mistake? Put up both hands. I'll, you know, I'll not ask you to raise your feet, Pastor. You know. I'd rather try and make a mistake than not try at all. But the more I allow him to operate through me, the fewer mistakes I make. Because I get used to hearing his voice. And I know what his voice sounds like. But when I was younger, it took me a while to begin to understand how the Spirit works. And he works in all of us that way. Now concerning the word of knowledge. The word of knowledge is, is just that. It's supernatural knowledge that comes to a Christian by which there is no other means they could have, they could have known. The perfect example is there's no way I knew that you were a weightlifter. I knew nothing about your back. You know. But all of a sudden um, I felt this snap in my own back. Now I can't tell you how the word of knowledge works in other people but I can tell you how it works through me when God manifests it. I feel a physical thing. Then in my spirit, I see what I'm feeling. And then uh, I will say what I have seen in the spirit and what I have felt. You say, well, do you ever miss it? Sure. But not very often. But sometimes it seems so strange and so weird. I'm thinking, I'm asking him to go and check to make sure the music track is ready. God, why would you heal his back right then? Why couldn't you wait until I was ready to pray for him? <laughs> but you remember the Bible says his ways are above our ways. His thoughts are above our thoughts. He has the timing. And it seemed in God's will that he be healed right then. So why don't I just allow myself to be used at that moment? This is why my wife will not go with me to Walmart. Because she knows I'm liable to have a healing line in the vegetables. Because when someone stops me and asks me for prayer, I will not say to them, well, let's step outside in a parking lot where no one will hear. Because I don't give a you-know-what about what anybody thinks. If they don't like it, it's too bad. I've got a right to be in Walmart. And if I want to pray for somebody in Walmart, I'll pray for somebody in Walmart. It must have been pretty serious to them or they wouldn't have stopped and asked me to pray. You know? And you should not ever be too busy to pray for someone when they're hurting. I'm sitting here, pastor's raising the offering and I, I hear my phone buzz and it's one of my friends in, in Dallas and I get a text from, from him, that problem that's going on. So I just, I just sent a text prayer, you know? I, I couldn't call, but I could text the prayer. You know, I sent the word. <laughs> I was preaching for John Osteen years ago, Joel Osteen's dad. Joel, Joel's dad was a, was a mentor to me. And Joel and all the Osteens uh, went to school. I, I put all of them, through, my dad and I put them all through school. Joel used to work for me in my TV department when he was a young man. So I've known the Osteens so many years. But um, I would preached for John, and they just dedicated their new building, not the building that Joel's in now, but the building that John built. Uh, and... Uh, I was backstage and was having a sandwich afterwards and had a drink in my hand and we're eating and drinking and, and uh, there's a man standing over in the corner and all of a sudden my fingers began to itch 
and uh, kind of go numb. And I thought, well, that's that's weird, you know. And so I, was, I just continued eating. I didn't I had no, no idea what it was. And all of a sudden, the Lord said, "See that man over there? Yeah." I said, "He's a doctor." And I said, "Really?" I said, "Yeah, he's an orthopedic surgeon." And I said something brilliant. I said, "God, how do you know?" <laughs> Now, why am, I, why am I admitting this to you? I'm trying to help you with some of the stupid things you say. Let you know you're not alone in saying dumb things to God. That you have to repent over, okay? So I'm, I'm really being vulnerable tonight. And the Lord said, he's losing his surgical practice because he's lost the feeling in his fingers. He can't operate anymore. He said, go over there and lay hands on him. I said, God, I'm eating a sandwich. I, couldn't you have had that happen in the service? See, I, I'm just, I'm just, these are the things that we do. And the Lord said, go over there and lay hands on him. Okay. So I put my sandwich down and I drank down, went over. And I said, doctor. He looked at me. I said, you're an orthopedic surgeon, right? He said, yeah. How'd you know that? I said, well, the Lord told me that. And I said, you're about to lose your surgical practice. And he started crying. He said, yeah. He said, uh, I haven't been able to, to operate because I'm losing the dexterity in my fingers. And uh, I took his hand in mine, prayed. All of a sudden, he started doing, wow, look at this. Both hands, he's just going to town with his hands. He said, look at this. He said, he said I'm healed. And I, I said, what does it mean? He said, well, it means I can do surgery. Look at this. But because I was obedient to something that I really didn't want to do, I had a good sandwich. And I was hungry. But I finally got over myself. Now, some of you need to get over yourself. So I'm, I'm being extra vulnerable tonight so that when you come up with the lame excuses that you come up with. That's good. There you go. Gets close to home, doesn't it? <laughs> But that's, that's how the word of knowledge works. And every one of us has had an experience where suddenly you knew something about somebody. And you may have delivered it, you may not have delivered it. But when that happens to you, it may seem strange. But the most important thing to do is to say to the Lord, what are you trying to say to me? And what do you want me to do with it? Now, those are very simple but pointed questions. And if you'll do that, the Lord will show you. He'll put someone across your path. I was in a reception line one night. Uh, my wife and I had gone to a wedding. And we were standing around uh, the reception line. Uh, when all of a sudden, uh, as, I got, as I got past one of the bridesmaids, uh, I got this word of knowledge. And uh, I said, the word of knowledge has come to me and, and Lindsay thought we might be out of place and she kind of elbowed me you know you know how you wives do <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I said Lindsay I, I have to give this word and, and I I said you've had uh, you've had cancer surgery and it, in your back you've had s spinal cancer well she just burst in tears because there's no way in the world I could have known that right. and I prayed for her right there in the receiving line she got healed yeah. uh, you, you have to be willing you have to be vulnerable well, what if I make a mistake? Well, so what? Yeah. Right. Say, Lord, I, I, you know, help me not to make that mistake again. Yeah. But I'd rather try yeah. Yeah. than not try at all. Amen. So, praise God. Um, I was uh, in South Africa preaching, and the Lord had spoken to me and said, I'm going to send you to Zambia for a crusade. Zambia is formerly uh, northern and southern Rhodesia. Well, actually, Zambia is to the south. No, Zambia is to the north. Oh, wait a minute, to the south and north. I don't remember which. Zambia, what's the other nation there? Zambia and uh, Zimbabwe. Uh, Zambia was northern Rhodesia, and Zimbabwe was southern Rhodesia. Now they're, they're independent countries. So the Lord said, I'm going to send you to Zambia. And I said, well, Lord, I don't know anybody in Zambia. He said, well, I do. <laughs> I'm, I'm saying this to you to help you get over your excuses. So I'm in South Africa, 
And the Lord said, you just leave it to me. So I, I was going to bed that night after the service, and my phone rang next to my bed. And uh, a voice with a very heavy African accent said, is this Dr. Richard Roberts? I said, yes. He said, this is Frederick Chaluba. Well, I, I'd never heard that name before. I said, yes, sir, Mr. Chaluba, who are you? He said, I'm the president of Zambia. Oh. Wow. <laughs> I didn't know God was going to go right to the head of the country. <laughs> so he said, uh, Dr. Roberts, uh, the Lord spoke to me to invite you to come for a crusade in our nation. When can you come? I said, well, when would you like me? <laughs> and he said, well, is there a way you could stop by? I know you're in South Africa. Is there a way you could stop by on your way back to the States so we could talk about it? I said, sure. So I changed my flight schedule to when I left South Africa, and I flew up to Zambia. I took one of my minister friends with me. In fact, I, I took a minister who, who, in whose room I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. He's a pastor in Indiana. And so uh, we flew up uh, to Lusaka, the capital. Got there. They put us, uh, put us in a big bedroom, and, and uh, it was a time uh, when Clinton was president, and he had been there. And so I slept in the same bed as Bill Clinton slept in, <laughs> in the big presidential area. And the next day, we went in to have lunch with President Chaluba and his wife. And uh, uh, it was a wonderful time, uh, and uh, they fed us beautifully. And, and uh, afterwards, uh, he said, I would like to formally invite you for a healing crusade. Well, God had done exactly what he said he was going to do. Uh, right. And so I thanked him and said, we said, well, I'll go home. We'll check the calendar. We'll get a date that's mutually agreeable. And I, I prepared to leave. When the Lord gave me a word of knowledge. And the Lord said, tell Mrs. Chaluba that between her second and third baby, she developed a, a problem in her stomach. The doctors have not yet found out what the problem is, how to, how to solve the problem, but I'm healing her. And um, I said, Lord, I don't want to give that word. And um, I just got an invitation and I didn't want God to mess up my crusade. <laughs> and so I, under my breath, you know how you talk to the Lord under your breath. I said to the Lord, what if you're wrong? And there was this silence. And so I said, Mr. President, the word of the Lord is coming to me, and my friend who was with me started doing this on my coat. <laughs> and I heard him say, not now. <laughs> you know, finally I just blurted it out, Mrs. Chaluba, and I gave the word, and she burst into tears. And she said, there's no way you could have known what I've been through in the hospital between my second and third child, and it ha it's still not well. And so I laid hands on her and prayed. Now, we were on our knees during this time. We had, uh, we had gotten on our knees for a time of prayer. Mr. Chuluba was a, was a Christian. And, um, in fact, he was a pastor. And um, we were on our knees praying, and that's when he invited me for the crusade. And so I prayed for her, and, and I found out about a month later that, that the doctor said the problem's completely gone. She's completely healed. And we went, and we had a tremendous crusade. Uh, several months later, went in, in Lusaka and up in Mufalira in the, coal, in the uh, copper mining area. And I went down into a copper mine while I was there. I went 3,500 feet uh, below the earth into the copper mines. And that night I preached a message. Today I went to hell and back. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, those are experiences that I've had. And I'm telling them so that you'll understand when you feel something that seems crazy to you. You say, Lord, what is it that you are trying to say? And what do you want me to do? Now, obviously, I have more experience uh, with, with the word of knowledge. And there have been times when, uh, um, when I didn't think there were any words of knowledge coming, but God manifested. And I, I was telling the pastors the other night, I guess it was last night, um, that I was in a Kenneth Hagin meeting, oh, years ago, back in the 80s. And my wife and I and my dad and mother were there sitting on the front row of a Hagin camp meeting. And Brother Hagin was preaching, and all of a sudden, he grabbed a hand mic and walked off the platform and said, now Richard Roberts will give the word of knowledge. Richard Roberts didn't have any word of knowledge. <laughs> but the moment the microphone touched my hand, the word of knowledge manifested. Amen. And there were many, many miracles. So you have to be instant in and out of season. Amen. Now, you have the word of wisdom. You have the word of knowledge. You have the gift of faith. 
I was explaining this morning to those of you that were here and those of you who weren't here you won't know but I'll give you just a synopsis I was explaining that it was a gift of faith that operated in my father when he had no money no land no buildings no students no grounds no curriculum and yet God had spoken to him build me a university build it on my authority build it on the Holy Spirit and how he began to pray in tongues and interpret back to his mind and God manifested a gift of faith for him to believe a gift of faith is a supernatural charger that comes upon your faith to take you to a new level that you've never been at before it's like, it's like your faith seems to hit the ceiling, but somehow God kicks in a supernatural charger where you can believe more than you thought you could believe. Amen. And every one of us has had an experience in our lives where we reached a certain level in faith, and yet somehow we broke through. That's an operation of the gift of faith. And you need to know what that is when it does happen. And the same is true uh, with, with the gift of prophecy. Every one of us at times have had a prophetic word for someone. But sometimes we hesitate giving that word because we don't want to be presumptuous and we don't want to be wrong. And lots of times when I pray for people, especially when I pray for young people, and I lay hands on someone that, it, that uh, the Lord will say to me, they're called to preach. And I will prophesy that into their life. You know, uh, And at, when it first began happening, I didn't want to say it. Because I felt like I was out of line. But if the Lord gives it to you, he, he will show you a way that you can say it. If you just say to him, what are you trying to say to me? And how do you want me to do it? Amen. The gift of prophecy operates in all of us from time to time. Uh, the discerning of spirits is a, is a gift that works more, at least in my opinion, it works more in women than men. I'm not saying it does not work in men. I'm just saying it works more in women. And my experience is because women are more sensitively made than men. Uh, my wife, for example, has a huge operation of the gift of uh, discerning of spirits. Uh, two, of, two of my daughters have a very strong operation of the word, uh, or uh, excuse me, the, the gift of discerning of spirits. But all of us have had an experience in our lives where we walked into a room and suddenly you felt something. Something wasn't right. You knew it. You didn't know exactly what it was, but you knew it. Or you shook someone's hand and you wanted to let go real quick. You didn't know what it was, but you discerned that there was something not right. God may or may not have shown you what it is, but you knew something was wrong had that happen to me once I was on a platform at a big uh, Catholic uh, charismatic meeting, 10,000 Catholics. They had asked me to come and have a healing service. And I sat down next to a minister, and when I sat down next to him, I just cringed. I didn't know what it was. I had no pro I, I didn't know what it was. I had no idea. But I just, boy. And you've had that ex kind of experience. I had no idea what it was, but I knew something was wrong. And in the months that followed, I found out in the national news what was wrong. I didn't know what it was, but I knew something was there. And I knew that I was not supposed to have anything to do with him. I was not being critical of him, don't understand him, don't misunderstand me. But I knew there was something that wasn't right. I wasn't unfriendly at all. I shook his hand and, and I smiled, but I knew something was wrong. I was, in, I was in Ghana. I've laid hands on four Ghanaian presidents and prayed over them. But um, Mr. Rawlings was in office at that time, and he invited me to his office to, to have a time of uh, questions and answers before the media, and we were having a press conference, and the radio, television, and newspaper reporters were there, and afterwards, I said to him, Mr. President, is it all right if I pray for you? Now, everything was live on television, and he said, sure. So I took his hand in mine, and I began to pray, and uh, after I prayed, I tried to release his hand and he wouldn't let go of my hand now Mr. Rollins was a big man much bigger than me his hands are seem like half as big half, half as much bigger than mine and he wouldn't let go of my hand and it was awkward 
cameras are rolling, the newspaper guys were there, and I'm here, I'm holding this guy's hand. And I'm not used to holding hands with men. <laughs> he would not let go of my hand. And he looked at me and he said, Dr. Roberts, I have held many hands in my life. Some hands hot and some hands cold. But your hand has the right temperature. Aww. And I said, well, Mr. President, it's not me that you're feeling. It's the anointing of the Holy Spirit that I carry. But it's not me. It's him. All of us have an anointing on our lives. People can feel it. They may not be able to express it. They may not be able to say it in the right words. But they know. They know there's something different about us. And the Lord will manifest things like that. Uh, I would never consider hiring someone in our ministry without running it past my wife. Because all she needs to do is spend three or four minutes with them and she knows. She'll look at me and she'll say, I know what that means. I know that uh, there's something that's not right. That's an operation of the discerning of spirits. It works more in women. Do not, say, not saying it doesn't work in men, but it works more in women. Now, the gifts of healing, and notice it's plural. That's particularly what operated in my, in my father's ministry. The laying on of hands and the operation of the gifts of healing. And uh, my father had uh, my father had an outward sign that God gave him. And it happened uh, in the early days of his ministry. He would have this feeling, this uh, presence that would come into his right arm and shoulder. And it would come down his arm and into his hand. And the power of God would shoot out of his right hand. And it was so strong that when he touched people with his right hand, oftentimes they would seemingly fly across the room. I mean, it would jolt them like a bolt of electricity. And uh, people would get their eyes upon his right hand. It wasn't his hand. It was God through his hand. But he would not go into a service without feeling the tangible presence of the Lord coming into his arm and his hand. He would not leave the hotel room. It didn't matter how long the driver had been waiting. If, it was, if he was half an hour late, if he hadn't felt that presence. And I would say to him, Daddy, what are we waiting on? Why aren't we going to the service? And he would say, Son, I have not felt that presence come into my hand yet. He would say, There are thousands of people depending on my, upon my prayers tonight. And I can't do it without the anointing of God. And so we would wait in the hotel room until that presence came. And then we would go to the service. He would say, Okay, I feel his presence now. Let's go. I grew up under that. And when he came to die, he said to me, Son, when I'm gone, the presence of God in the same way that it came down my right arm will begin to come down your left arm. And it will come out and shoot out of your left hand like it's done out of my right hand. And I said to him, Dad, why? Why my left hand and your right? He said, Because you're left-handed and I'm right-handed. <laughs> I'm left-handed. He was right-handed, but I'm left-handed. And after he died, about four, five, six months later, I was up in Canada preaching when all of a sudden in my hotel room, this presence came into my arm, began to flow down my arm and shoot out my left hand. And whenever that happens, and it happens from time to time, not all the time, whenever that happens, I know that I'm to lay hands on someone. That's a sign that God has given me. And uh, gifts of healing will manifest through you. There, there are times when you feel an unction to pray for someone. You might say, well, I, I don't want to intrude. I, I don't want it to be misunderstood. And we dealt with a lot of that last night in the service. But I encourage you uh, because seldom will you ever find someone who will turn down your prayers. There's something about people. When they get sick, they want to get well. And they're not really too concerned about who prays for them. And if you offer to pray, most everyone will say, oh, yes, I'd like to have your prayers. You know, you've got nothing to lose by trying. But God will manifest those gifts through us. And they're manifesting through us more than we realize. If we'll just say to the Lord, what are you trying to say? And what do you want me to do? 
if you'll be pliable and open and vulnerable. You say, well, what if I make a mistake? Well, say, God, I, I missed it. Help me not to miss it again. You know, he, he has this treasure in earthen vessels. If you're looking for someone perfect, uh, do not look in the mirror. And do not look at the person sitting on your right or left. Only one perfect one who ever lived. His name was Jesus. Now, let's, let's move over into the gift of tongues and the gift of interpretation of tongues which is different from praying in the Spirit. Okay. They're two different manifestations. The gift of tongues is sovereign and is generally manifested in some type of public setting where someone will rise and give what would be commonly called in our language a message in tongues. It's not a daily devotional prayer language. It is a sovereign manifestation. Paul said that should not happen unless there be an interpreter so that people understand what the Lord is saying. That's why two of the nine gifts are the gift of tongues and the gift of interpretation of tongues. Now, uh, many of you perhaps, and I have in many, many occasions, been in services where there has been the operation of the gift of tongues and the gift of interpretation of tongues. Typically, it is not a specific word for an individual. It's usually more corporate in its sense, more in the general sense. And there are times when, when uh, in my life where I have seen it abused, as perhaps you have, uh, people who are zealous and get out of the will of God and, and, uh, and misuse and abuse things of that nature. Well, but do not throw out the baby with the bathwater. Okay? Do not do that. Yes, there are some people who've made some mistakes. But not everyone makes mistakes. Yes. Yeah, there's some crooked lawyers, but that doesn't mean every lawyer is crooked. There's some crooked doctors, but not every doctor is crooked. There's some crooked ministers, but not every minister is crooked. So don't throw out the baby. You've heard that phrase? Don't throw out the baby with the bath water. Okay? That phrase came into existence in 15th century England because people waited until the month of June to take a bath. And they got a large tub of water out in the center of their little town because June was the month where young people were married. And they took their bath in June when the weather was nice. First the men, and then after they were through, the women. And after they were through and the water was sufficiently dirty, they would put in the children and the babies. And the water would be so dirty that someone came up with the idea, don't throw out the baby with the bath water. That's where that phrase came into being. You can read that online. I believe everything I read on the internet, don't you? <laughs> but don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. Just because there have been some abuses does not nullify what God wants to do. But don't also don't make the mistake of thinking that that is our daily devotional prayer language. It is totally separate different, the different operation, and it's manifested supernaturally by the Holy Spirit and by Him only. And there have been times when a gift of tongues will manifest through me, and I will, I will speak that out and someone will interpret. Or sometimes I will interpret it myself if the Lord gives me that word. And we've all had experiences like that, and you may have had something particularly happen like that. Uh, and, you, and you need to use wisdom in how it operates. In, in, a, in a setting like this, you would go to your pastor and you would, ask, you would ask your pastor for guidance. I don't know if that manifests in this church from time to time or not. I don't know if it does or not. But if it does, it should go through your pastor. And it should not be uh, great numbers. Paul said maybe by two or by three. It should be in order. In other words, you don't have to, be, you don't have to act crazy for the gifts of the Spirit to operate in your life. But it's important that we understand these things because God is manifesting these things yes. in the lives of Christians every day. Yes. Every day, the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, the gift of tongues, the gift of interpretation of tongues, the working of miracles. Oh, I left out, I left out the working of miracles, didn't I? You know, uh, they say the greatest working of miracle was in the life of Joshua when he told his son to stand still, and it did. 
you're slow, but you're not worth you're worth waiting on. I said the the son, not his son. Never mind. Uh, <clears throat> You just got that, didn't you? <laughs> the working of miracles is is uh, is all throughout the Bible. You know, uh, you can see it uh, all throughout the miracles, uh, all throughout the Bible. When God did things like that, when God uh, rolled back the waters of the Red Sea, you know that was an operation of the working of miracles. Uh, you see it when uh, David when David Stone uh, hit Goliath in the forehead. All those things are working of miracles, and God hasn't stopped the working of miracles. He's still manifesting it. But all these gifts are resident in the Holy Spirit and from time to time he operates them through us so the next time you have something like that happen the next time you have something that a word or you or, a, or something an image that God gives you and you don't know exactly what to do just say to the Lord what are you trying to say and what would you like me to do with it and you'll uh, you'll begin to uh, be used and the more you open yourself up the more God will manifest it now there have been times when I have said to the Lord because of the situation that I was in uh, no gifts of the spirit today <laughs> because in my mind I, I think that it's not appropriate but um, who am I to tell the Lord I remember I was speaking before parliament in a nation and I said to the Lord no word of knowledge today let them come to the crusade but the Lord paid no attention and the first person that was healed was the vice president of the nation and I was out of line so I apologize to the Lord but you know but, but I'm saying all that to you so you'll understand where I'm coming from and it'll be a blessing in your life praise you Father did you get anything from that can you all remember some kind of experience that you've had when something like that's happened to you and you you're probably some of you are probably saying, "Well, okay, that's what that was. All right, I, I I see now." And he'll manifest that more and more and more. And the more you pray in tongues on an individual level, and the more you interpret back to your mind, the more open you are for those types of manifestations to happen. And they'll happen when you least expect it. And they'll happen when it seems like it's inappropriate. Amen. Like it has to me. But uh, God is in charge of that agenda. Praise God. Let's just lift our hands now and just praise the Lord tonight. Thank you, Father, for the blessed Holy Spirit, the divine paraclete, the one called alongside to help us, not only to be with us, but to be in us. For you said that the Holy Spirit would come upon us to be witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria and even the uttermost parts of the earth. Jerusalem represents our home, our family. Judea represents the places that we go, places that we frequent. Samaria represents the tough places, the places where it's hard to be a witness, and the uttermost parts of the earth. So we lift our hands and praise you in the spirit tonight. <laughs> Shondo ko sombra ka satana ka sa. Shedi atana ka sabra ka sa. Shina ka sabra ka sa. Shendi otono ko sombro ko so. Kela masiti atana ka sita ka stamra ka sa. Anybody with a back problem, would you just stand up, please? Anyone that has pain in your back? I hear the Lord saying I'm going to heal backs tonight now someone who is sitting next to that person just reach out and touch them there's a manifestation for healing in backs tonight I hear the Lord saying I'm going to heal backs tonight discs vertebra spinal column, pain in the upper part, in the center, in the lower part, all the way down to the tailbone. In the name of Jesus, I come against this pain. You foul, tormenting thing, come out now in the name of Jesus. And there it goes.
goes. Pain is leaving backs right now. And a number of you are going to be able to start bending and twisting and turning and finding that pain that you had is leaving you now. Hallelujah. 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 Just see what you can do. 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 Mashtiata naka sombra kasa. Kela makasia. Shodiata naka sombra kasa. Whatever you could not do, just see what you can do now. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now, now who can tell there's healing happening in your back right now? That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Hallelujah. Give praise unto the Lord today. Hallelujah. Now I want you to notice what I did. All I did was acknowledge what God showed me. And then I prayed. I did my part. Okay. I discharge my responsibility. This, this is not rocket science. Not some big formula. It's just being willing to be obedient. And if you say, well, you know, you're, you're special. No. Nothing special about me. Nothing whatsoever. Just ask my wife. <laughs> it's not me. It's him. But I have learned how to avail myself to him. That when I, when I hear him say, I'm going to heal people's backs, I just immediately say, people stand up. The Lord wants to heal backs, and I start praying. And God starts manifesting it. It's just that simple. It's not difficult. I don't have to work at it. I don't have to try to conjure it up. You know? I don't have to try to get you to do five or six different things. You just obey the Lord. And if he'll do that through me, he will do that through you. And you will be astonished at what will happen. Miracles that will begin to happen around you. Praise the Lord. Now, who has pain in your knee or your hip or your foot or your ankle? If that's you, stand up, please. Your knee, your hip, your foot, your ankle, swelling in the knee, anything like that. I hear the Lord saying, I'm going to heal knees, hips, feet, swelling in the leg. Uh -huh. I'll do that, Lord. And varicose veins. Now, somebody just reach out and touch them. Now, am I making this too complicated? Isn't it simple? Nothing complicated about it. It's just the willingness to do it. And... Amazing things will happen when you just pray. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, now I see, I see swelling leaving knees right now. It's like fluid is just draining out. In the name of Jesus, I, there it goes. I speak to the pain in the knee. Come out right now. Pain in the ankle and in the foot, especially the bottom of the foot. Be healed in Jesus' name. Pain in the hip. Come out now come out now the pain that goes down the sciatica come out now in Jesus name there it goes there it goes there goes the, there goes the pain it's just draining right down it's like it's going right down the leg and out of your foot in Jesus name and the varicose veins just go flat varicose yes you oh yes you will veins yes you will yes you will obey in Jesus name every varicose vein go flat no more sticking out Jesus name hips and knees and feet and ankles and swelling stop it now start moving your hip your knee your foot your leg see put some weight on it jump up and down run around the room see what see what God is doing you're going to be amazed at what is happening
Now, who can tell? Something's happening. There's healing happening. Look at that. Look at the hands. Now, did I do anything special? No. I just called on the name of the Lord. And you cooperated with your faith. You believed when I prayed something was going to happen. <laughs> and we're having miracles. I don't have to sweat and spit and all that, you know. I don't have to make a spectacle, you know. I, I wish I could just get this across to people. It's, it's, this is not something that's hard. But you have to have time, you know. And you can't just walk up on the platform and just expect the Holy Spirit just to do everything you say when you start because He's in charge, but you're not. You have to wait on the Lord and you have to, you have to be sensitive to His timing. There's a timing. I, I, had the, I had the order of service all planned out. So far, God has not done anything that I planned. <laughs> I had something that was in my heart that I wanted to do that I wanted to do uh, right after I sang, but the Lord took me another direction, so I'll do it later. And if he doesn't let me do it tonight, maybe he'll let me do it tomorrow. Okay? I've learned where I don't really care. I just want to do what he wants me to do. In that, I am fulfilled in doing what, what he, what, uh, what, ha, 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 yeah, 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 okay. All right, right now? Yeah. Now or later? Okay, all right. I hear the word cancer. I hear the word cancer. And I hear the word blood pressure problem. And I hear the word blood sugar problem. And I hear the word heart situation. If any of those uh, have attacked you, would you stand please? Heart, blood pressure, blood sugar, cancer, tumor, mass, growth. Makasiti Ashtambra. Just begin now to pray in the spirit. Shila Makasati Anana Kasinga. Shestono Kosobra Kasa. Cancer, you foul, tormenting thing. You tumor, you mass, your growth. Come out. Come out of the breast. Come out of the bone. Come out of the brain. Come out of the muscle, the tissue. Come out of the organ. Come out of the blood. Every tumor, every mass, I hate cancer, every growth, come out and enter again no more forever. Blood pressure and blood sugar, that which is too high, I command you in Jesus' name, come down. Blood pressure and blood sugar, that's too low. I command you in Jesus' name, Come up and regulate. Regulate. Regulate in the name of Jesus. Heart beat normally. No more arrhythmia. No more skipping of beats. No more weakness. I rebuke the leak in the valve. Loose it in the name of Jesus. Come out enter this body again no more forever let healing begin now in the name of Jesus is there someone here that has a child or a grandchild or someone that you know the child has spina bifida I get that word from the Lord is there someone here you, you wave your hand at me if I'm, I'm hearing the word out of the blue I'm hearing spina bifida that's a, a, a brain situation. I'm hearing that word. Is there someone, you have a child or grandchild or you know someone? Is it you? Father, in the name of Jesus, I know there's no distance in prayer. I send that word. Is it him? Aha. Kaliata. Just begin to pray in the spirit. Sheila Makosondia Sambra. Come over here, son. Sheila Makosa. Come right down here. Kibrakasa. Is it, it's him, right? Is it him? Kila la kasiti ashtabra. Loose it. Every trace of spina bifida come out. And may he be perfectly healed and normal in every respect. In Jesus' name.
Hallelujah. Now you see, that's an example. I was praying for hearts and I heard the Lord say, spina bifida. It's been very easy to say, well, now Lord, you know, that must not be you. But it was Him. Amen. And I have to be willing to say, yes. Yes. at the risk of being wrong. Yes. But I wasn't wrong. <laughs> And I've learned over the years to be sensitive to that voice Amen. and just be obedient to it. Now, there's another person you've lost hearing or partial hearing in your left ear. Where are you? It's your left ear. Would you stand up, please? It's your left ear. There's two of you. Yeah. In the authority of the name of Jesus. How long has it bothered you? A long time. Loose it in Jesus' name. Where's the other shield? Kaliata naka sombra kasa. Sheda kasa prakasa. She no siti kisimbri atanaka siyatsa. In the name of Jesus. Ear open. I want every pastor, every pastor to stand up. Every full time minister. If you are in full-time, not part-time, if you're in full-time ministry, I want you to stand up. Anybody else in full-time ministry? Would you all step forward and let me lay hands on you? Kila masondi ashtambrakasa. I was in a prayer line one night with Brother Hagen, and I was young, fresh in the healing ministry and I was walking with him as he was laying hands on ministers I was at a camp meeting and he turned to me and said you can have this if you want it just as simple he said if you want it he said if you want this anointing you can have it and I didn't know if it was him speaking or if it was the Lord and so I said to him Brother Hagin, is that you or is that the Lord? He said, it's the Lord. The Lord's telling me, if you want this, you can have it. Just as simple as that. I looked at him and said, I want it. <laughs> I want it. He laid hands on me. The power of God hit me, and I've never been the same since. <laughs> now, why did I tell you that story? Because if you want it, <laughs> you can have it. I want it. It's just as simple as that. If you want it. If you want it, it's yours. And when I lay hands on you, if you'll go into agreement with me, it's going to manifest. And it's going to be stronger than you've ever known it. Okay? Thank you. Just stretch your hands out toward them, all of you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name, and this is all Brother Hagin did to me, in the name of Jesus. 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 Jesus. Strong in you already. Very strong. In the name of Jesus. Oh, my gosh, does Nigeria need this power? In the name of Jesus. 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 In the name, and, and, and for your husband who isn't here, and for his healing and for this anointing on you in Jesus' name. Send the word to him right now. Rise up and be healed in Jesus' name. Everyone standing, please. Just reach out and put your arms around someone. Reach out and put your arms around someone. Father, you have something for everyone tonight. 
you manifested some words of knowledge and I'll, I'll give any others that you give me but I'm not going to try to conjure them up Lord only if you give them to me but I pray corporately tonight over everyone and I bless you tonight in the name of the Lord I pray over each one of you I pray the prayer of faith and the Bible says the prayer of faith shall save the sick person and the Lord will raise you up. I pray over each and every one of you tonight. And here is my specific prayer. I pray over you the blessing of Abraham. The kind of blessing that sticks. I pray the blessing of Abraham over you. I pray the spirit of David. The boldness over you. I pray over you tonight the mind of Christ. And I pray over you the wisdom of Solomon. I plead the shed blood of Jesus over each one of you tonight. And I pray tonight that as you open yourself up and say, God, use me through the gifts of the Spirit in any way that you choose. Help me, Lord, to be sensitive to you and when you manifest something that I would say, Lord, what are you trying to show me and what do you want me to do? Let me be an open vessel used by you. Lord, that's, that's my prayer over everyone here tonight. And I thank you, Father, and I praise you. And now, by the authority given to me by Jesus' name, I dispatch the heavenly angels to encamp about you. You didn't lose your angels just because you grew up. They're ministering spirits, Hebrews tells us. Ministering spirits for us. So I dispatch your angels to encamp about you and to keep you safe from harm, sin, danger, accident, injury, pilfering, theft, hijacking, and terrorism. I plead the blood of Jesus over you. Praise God. In one of these services this week, I'm going to talk about angels. I'm going to talk about the seven-piece armor of God. I'm not sure which service, but this week, before I have my food, I'm going to deal with that. Because, because many Christians are getting up in the morning and going to battle uh, in a swimsuit. <laughs> They're not dressed for battle. They've not taken the time to put on their angels and put on the seven piece armor of God. We'll deal with that this week. So that when I get finished with you when I get finished with you, you're going to be armed and dangerous to the devil. Okay? Is that a deal? That's a deal. Say yes sir, that's a deal. Okay, praise God. Now, I have fulfilled two of the three tenets that God showed me that I'm to minister on while I'm here. Yesterday was on healing. Today on the Holy Spirit. Tomorrow on the principles of seed faith. Everything that we have done in our ministry for all these years has come as a result of seed faith. And I have some tremendous things to share with you that are extremely applicable to your life. So tomorrow morning at 10 and tomorrow night at 7. If you, if, you, uh, if, you can, if, you, if you have a, if you work and you can get off work, you'd be great if you could. If you can't understand, but if you can, be here at 10 in the morning and also tomorrow night. I still, are there any books left over there? I don't know. Does anybody know? Are there still some books? There's still some books that are left over there. So take them all, okay? Don't leave me with any. I put them in the suitcase and go home with them. So <laughs> praise God. Pastor, I'm going to turn it back to you. God bless you. I have done all the Lord has instructed me tonight. Unless there's something else that you want me to do. I'm, I've done what the Lord said. I'm happy. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Aren't we blessed? Give him some thanks tonight.